On the day of his wedding, the scumbag demoted his wife to a concubine. Lin Yinshi directly took off the phoenix crown and gave it to his cousin to wear, leaving him with the Book of Separation. The emperor sent someone to stop her and said, Prince Rui, if you don't like it, I still have four sons to choose from. Lin Yunxi tenderly pointed to the frail and sickly character of Jiu Huang uncle in the middle corner, who is said to have at most three months to live. Uncle Jiu Huang is a crazy criticism. He dares not offend the scumbag when he marries him, and his identity can still achieve a level one leap. He firmly holds down the scumbag and calls him Aunt Huang. The key is that she is still pregnant with a baby, and after the death of Uncle Jiu Huang, she can be a widow and take care of the baby smoothly. If he doesn't die, save him, and have a smooth and carefree life with his offspring, the money will be paid off. Lin Yinxi's abacus was ringing, but to his surprise, the identity of the ninth emperor uncle, who was petite and frail, shook one layer after another. The owner of the night tower, the president of the Yang Fan Chamber of Commerce, princes from other countries, and the father of the child Lin Yinxi. You're not finished. Uncle Jiu Huang brought a basin of foot washing water and said, It's not over. My master said my bazi is good, and a long life of a hundred years is not a problem. Be good, as a husband, I will wash your feet for you in this lifetime. Chapter 1 The Great Hall of Joy. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Ah! The little fool of the Lin family is here. Who is the bride in the chapel? Suddenly, someone exclaimed in surprise in the joyful hall. Everyone looked and saw a young girl wearing a wedding dress and a phoenix crown standing quietly at the entrance of the hall. The girl wore her iconic heavy makeup, with a black mole on her left eye and eyebrow. Anyone who had seen her knew that she was the silly and ugly young lady of the Lin State Mansion. Lin Yunxi if they were to see Lin Yunxi on weekdays, everyone wouldn't be surprised, but today is the day when Lin Yunxi gets married to King Rui of Chu Xuanrui. Lin Yunxi is here, and who is the bride standing next to Chu Xuanrui, covered in a red veil? Thinking of this, everyone turned to the center of the hall and looked at a new couple. Chu Xuanrui's face was cold and indifferent, and his gaze towards Lin Yunxi was an undisguised disgust. The bride, who was still covered in a red veil, stood quietly, her hands clasped tightly by her side, clearly indicating her nervousness. At this moment, Lin Yinxi finally had a movement, jumping and clapping her hands, her voice cheerful and clear. Worshipping, bowing, one bowing to heaven and earth dies early, and two bowing to the high hall feels that their lives are long. Couples worship each other and climb the wall together. Hmm, why don't you bow anymore? During the singing, Lin Yunxi had already arrived at the center of the wedding hall, blinking a pair of big apricot eyes, curiously looking at Chu Xuanrui and the motionless bride. She was a 21st century gold medal drug doctor who was betrayed by her teammates on a mission and died from falling off a cliff from high altitude. She opened her eyes and found herself crossing the river. The original owner was a fool who was being coaxed by a nanny to change her wedding dress and put on a pink dress, coming to the wedding hall to thank the sister who had worked hard to pay her respects. In ancient times, concubines only wore pink for big weddings, and it was also their duty to offer tea in the wedding hall. It was obvious that bullying her was foolish, so he coaxed her to demote herself to a concubine. Of course, she is a fool. King Rui would marry her not only because he was engaged since childhood, but also because the original owner's father died in battle a month ago. In order to appease her father's 200,000 soldiers, Emperor Chu made every effort to promote her marriage. Chu Xuanrui dared not disobey the holy will, so he came up with the idea of Li Dai Tao. Above the Shitang, she willingly offered tea and happily demoted herself to a concubine. Even if 200,000 soldiers were willing to help her stand out, they could not find an excuse. No matter how fair the Chu Emperor is, he will still favor his own son. When the big things turn small and the small things turn small, she can only mute and eat Huanglian, unable to express her suffering. But who told her to travel, 
then she will definitely not let the scumbag succeed. Lin Yinxi felt even colder at the thought of this. As early as reviewing her memories, she realized that most of the misfortunes of the original owner came from Chu Xuanrui. The original owner became foolish when he was a child because he saved Chu Xuanrui. A month ago, Chu Xuanrui tricked the original owner into meeting outside the city, and not only narrowly escaped death, but also lost his body. After this, the original owner became pregnant, and until now, it is unknown who the child's father is. The original owner placed his heart on Chu Xuanrui for more than a decade. It's okay if he doesn't accept it, but he should never be so mistreated or insulted. Here, as soon as Lin Yinxi finished speaking, there was a deathly silence in the Shitang. After the silence, a burst of laughter erupted. The joke about King Rui was too much for everyone to read, but Lin Yinxi was really a fool. The words he asked were really funny. The congratulatory words of wishing someone a premature death, wishing someone a hat, and asking how to continue bowing in this hall. Furthermore, Lin Yunxi in front of him was clearly the main leader, and the counterfeit under the cover dared not bow down in front of the emperor and empress. What exactly is going on? The Chu emperor, who held a high position, lowered his face and looked at Chu Xuanrui with dignity. A hint of anxiety flashed in Chu Xuanrui's eyes, and he immediately became angry. He reached out to grab Lin Yunxi and forced him, why did you just run out like this? Did Shu Mama forget what she said to you? Speak it out. Lin Yunxi had already been on guard against Chu Xuanrui, how could he have caught him? She turned around and ran behind the Chu Emperor, grabbed his sleeve, frowned and hid her cunning eyes, shouting in fear, killing. Killing. Prince Rui is going to kill Xi'er. If she were a normal person, Lin Yunxi would not drag the Chu Emperor like this, after all, this is a dynasty with imperial power exceeding heaven. However, she is a fool, and anything a fool does is normal. Her father has died, and the Chu Emperor only cares about marriage. When it comes to critical situations, he can be easily manipulated, indicating that he is only superficial in his treatment of himself. However, as long as Emperor Chu is willing to do superficial work, he will protect her. Chu Xuanrui was so angry by Lin Yinxi's actions that his face turned blue and purple, and he dared not act rashly again. No matter how arrogant he is, he dare not go behind the Chu Emperor to arrest people. This little fool is really annoying. He hasn't done anything yet, so he just shouts and screams, it's not appropriate. However, as I grew older, I learned to report to my father. A hint of darkness flashed in Lin Xuanrui's eyes. At this moment, the bride who had been covered with a red veil finally had a move. She lifted the top of her head and revealed a pitiful face that was about to cry. Wow, isn't this Lin Miao Miao, the second miss of Lin Gongwu's mansion? How could she replace Lin Yinxi here to pay respects? Lin Yinxi hid behind the Chu Emperor and heard someone among the guests exclaim in surprise, his eyes moving. No mistake, she remembered that this woman was the legitimate daughter of her second uncle's family, her cousin Lin Miao Miao. In my memory, I always liked to coax her with candy, and everyone laughed at her as a fool. Only Lin Miao Miao called her sister, so she really liked Lin Miao Miao. Unexpectedly, her sister, whom she regarded as a close relative and confidant, would stab a knife in the back. Chapter 2 The Book of Divorce is Ready you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Sister, be good, come over quickly. Lin Miao Miao gently waved to Lin Yunxi, encouraging her to come over. Lin Yunxi's eyes flickered with coldness, and he looked up with a naive expression, hesitating to walk over. Lin Miao Miao affectionately grabbed Lin Yunxi's hands and coaxed with a smile. Sister, be good, stop making trouble. I forgot what you said. Do you want me to come to Prince Rui's mansion with you? You said I will take care of you and give you candy when I come to Prince Rui's mansion. Come on, learn everything that Grandma Xu taught you to do, okay? What Grandma Xu teaches is to serve tea and call her sister sister sister. Lin Yunxi sneered inwardly, 
his head tilted obediently on his face, as if he was really reflecting carefully. Then he slowly pointed to Lin Miao Miao's belly, word by word, with a clear and crisp voice. Grandma Xu said that I am a fool and not worthy of marrying Prince Duan. She said that my younger sister has a little nephew in her belly and wants her to become a princess and sheer to be a concubine. No, 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 he hugged his head with both hands in fear and crawled behind the Chu Emperor again. Lin Yinxi's words may sound foolish, but everyone can understand them. In an instant, the expressions of King Rui and Lin Miao Miao became subtle. Although they don't like Lin Yinxi, this little fool, it doesn't stop them from disliking Prince Rui and Lin Miao Miao. My brother dot in dot law and sister dot in dot law secretly got together behind my sister's back. Not only did they get pregnant before marriage, but they also planned to demote their wife to a concubine, either relying on my sister as a fool. Even fools deceive, bah, shameless. Lin Miao Miao stood still, her lungs almost bursting with anger when she heard Lin Yinxi's words and the disdainful and contemptuous gazes from everyone. Shu Mama is Chu Xuanrui's confidant. It's not surprising to know she's pregnant, but she's just too careless. How could she reveal her pregnancy to a little fool? If all the foolish words are settled today, her reputation will be completely ruined. Even if she marries Chu Xuanrui in the end, this stain will remain with her for a lifetime. Lin Miao Miao gritted her teeth and gently wiped away her tears, innocently coaxing and explaining. Sister, I will marry Prince Rui on your behalf. It was agreed upon between us. Our relationship is innocent. Can I give you two candies? Please be obedient. Lin Yinxi is still hiding behind the Chu Emperor. She's not really foolish, how could she be deceived? She turned her head and jumped out word by word seriously, Sheer, you're not talking nonsense, don't eat candy. Lin Yinxi's lack of cooperation is really beyond Lin Miao Miao's control. Chu Xuanrui looked at Lin Miao Miao in distress and couldn't bear it anymore. He was just an accident with Miao at that time. If it weren't for that, how could he have done something to demote his wife to a concubine? Miao has always been kind and weak. Children are his blood and blood, how could they be wronged? Chu Xuanrui's forehead was bulging with veins, as if he was about to reach out and strike Lin Yinxi. Lin Yinxi, that's enough. I have already indulged you enough. With my foolishness and nonsense, I have cut your tongue. Whose tongue are you going to cut? Lin Yinxi's body shrank, and the Chu Emperor finally intervened. The Chu Emperor was so shrewd that he couldn't understand what tricks were hidden inside, let alone the royal heirs who couldn't afford to lose anything. He casually pointed to Zhao Yijing among the guests and said, You come. Zhao Yijing dared not neglect it. After passing the pulse for Lin Miao Miao, his face became solemn and he said, Your Majesty, Miss Lin Eyre has indeed been pregnant for over a month, and her pulse is stable. The fetus is healthy. When these words fall, it is clear at a glance who is true and whose words are false. Today's wedding banquet was truly full of twists and turns, with each wave becoming more and more exciting, and everyone was filled with regret. Lin Yinxi looked at the expressions on everyone's faces and secretly raised his eyebrows. It's impossible to settle this matter like this. She pretended to be afraid and pulled the sleeve of Emperor Lachu, pulling everyone's thoughts back. Uncle Emperor, if Xi'er doesn't become a concubine, Daddy will be angry. The Emperor of Chu, not knowing what he was thinking, pondered for a moment before agreeing, Okay, I won't let you be a concubine. Really. Thank you, Emperor Uncle. Sierra knows that Emperor Uncle is the best. As soon as Lin Yunxi received the promise from the Chu Emperor, he joyfully approached Chu Xuanrui with an unpleasant expression on his face. 
He pulled out a crumpled piece of paper from his sleeve, thought for a moment, wiped his nose, and stuffed it into Chu Xuan Rui's hand. Rui Wang, you have taken the divorce certificate. You can't play pranks with Xi er again in the future. Chu Xuan Rui was stiff all over, his gaze fixed on the crumpled paper in his hand, and his face turned purple and blue, making it extremely unsightly. Pop! The crowd couldn't help but laugh again. This little fool, what he did was really cute. They will be infuriated if they substitute for Chu Xuan Rui. Sister, what are you doing? I know this is all our fault. I can't help but admire the prince, which is why he made a mistake that every man in the world would make. If you hate me, then hate me. Why humiliate the prince? Lin Miao Miao exclaimed in surprise and gave Lin Yinxi a coquettish look. God's annoyance has made a mistake that every man in the world would make. It's time for Bai Lianhua to pretend to be a good person. How could she not achieve it? Lin Yinxi smiled foolishly, then rudely pulled off Lin Miao Miao's phoenix crown, forcefully clasped her own phoenix crown, and clapped her hands happily, not bad, not as beautiful as Xi Er. From today on, Rui Wang Xi Er doesn't want it anymore, sister. You keep it well. No matter how the tone sounds, it's like Lin Yinxi saying, I don't want this junk anymore, you keep it. Lin Miao Miao's cheeks turned pale and red, and her body shook a few times. Chu Xuan Rui heard Lin Yinxi say he didn't want him anymore, and his heart trembled for no reason, as if something important had left him. Lin Yinxi left behind his retirement letter in Feng Guan, feeling that today's matter should also come to an end. She remembers having her younger brother and stepmother in the mansion, and she had her identity changed by someone, but she doesn't know how they are doing now. Lin Yinxi turned around and naively asked the Chu Emperor, Emperor Uncle, Xi Er has retired from the Rui King. Can we go back now? Emperor Chu remained silent for a long time, just a pair of unfathomable eyes quietly staring at Lin Yinxi. Under the direct gaze of Emperor Chu, Lin Yinxi felt as if there was a big mountain pressing down on him, almost suffocating. This was probably Junwei. Lin Yinxi dared not look at Emperor Chu, confirming that there should be nothing exposed before he lowered his eyebrows and continued to pretend to be foolish and nibble on his fingers. After a long time, until it seemed like a long century, Emperor Chu smiled. He said, Yinxi, the more I look at you, the more I feel that you look like your mother. Her mother, it is said, disappeared shortly after giving birth, and no one knows where she went. Her marriage to Prince Duan was also arranged by her mother. In my memory, the original owner knew nothing about his mother. What did Emperor Chu suddenly mention to his mother? Lin Yinxi felt strange and listened to Emperor Chu continuing. Your father sacrificed for the country as a hero, and King Rui was indeed at fault in this matter. If you don't like King Rui, I have other sons who have not yet married. You can choose as you please. As soon as Emperor Chu finished speaking, the entire room was filled with guests in an uproar. The emperor's son is randomly chosen, and even a princess from a country does not receive such good treatment. A fool, how can he da? Chapter 3 The princes each have their own prosperity. You are listening at novelfull.audio. This translator is experiencing an error, please try another translator. Chapter 4 Wang Ye's Platoon Station You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. At this moment, only the Emperor and Empress were still present. Lin Yinxi frowned and walked over to pay his respects to the Emperor and Empress. The father of the original owner had taught the original owner etiquette and had previously worshipped the Emperor and Empress with the original owner. Nothing can be too extreme. The original owner is foolish but his personality is definitely not disliked. You child, you're tired today. Come and sit next to this palace, the empress smiled and asked Lin Yinxi to come over. Lin Yinxi frowned and did not go over immediately. The marriage is undecided, with a baby still in the womb and an uncertain future. Restoring normalcy will bring many more constraints, so continuing to play dumb for now is the best choice. 
To play dumb, one cannot behave too normally. Lin Yinshi pondered and looked up at the plate of green plums in front of the empress. She reached out and begged naively, Empress, Shia wants to eat green plums. The empress was taken aback by the words and then handed the whole plate of green plums to Lin Yinshi, saying, Here you are. The palace maids and eunuchs on both sides couldn't help but chuckle, asking for food in front of the empress, they were really foolish. Lin Yinshi pretended not to be able to see and held the whole plate of green plums in his arms, nibbling on them while paying attention to the surroundings. Quickly, five tall, extravagantly dressed, and exceptionally good dot looking men arrived and lined up to salute the emperor and empress in unison. My courtiers Chu Xianchen, Chu Xuanli, Chu Xuanma, Chu Xuanrui, and Chu Xuanli have met their parents' empresses and fathers. After speaking, they stood aside and were assigned to both sides. Some of them have been to Prince Rui's mansion today and are aware of the whole story, while others have not, and have also learned the whole story from their population. Chu Xuanrui was just dismissed from participating, but he came to join the fun. The Empress Dowager did not speak, so no one dared to drive him away. There are a total of five princes, although each has their own merits, in terms of appearance, Chu Xuanrui is indeed superior. But what's the use of being good dot looking? He's always a scumbag. Lin Yinshi pursed his lips in disgust and then shifted his gaze to the other princes. Chu Xianchen had a dark and composed face, with a murderous look in his eyes, as if saying, if you dare to choose my king, I will kill you. Chu Xuanma frowned and pressed his head extremely low, as if he didn't want her to see it, nor did he want to see her. Chu Xuanli glared at her forcefully, with big and round eyes that didn't look scary, but rather a bit funny. Crown Prince Chu Xuanli appeared to be the gentlest, with a smile in his eyes, but Yen knew there was no hidden knife in his smile. These royal princes do not have a fuel-dot-efficient lamp. Lin Yinshi took a gloomy bite of the green plum, feeling conflicted in his heart. The child is now a month old and will be born nine months later. These princes know that wearing green on their heads will definitely be troublesome. Yinshi, go take a look, said the Chu Emperor. Lin Yinshi stood up holding a plate, nibbling on green plums while circling around several princes. To be honest, the princes are all pretty good looking, but there's really no one who suits them. If you want to choose, you can only reluctantly choose Chu Xuanli. After all, he even makes people laugh at him, and he should be the easiest one among a few to control. Chu Xuanma saw that Lin Yinshi's gaze had been fixed on Chu Xuanli's body for a while, and his eyebrows and eyes turned, revealing a hint of schadenfreude. With a malicious intent, he placed his hand on Chu Xuanli's shoulder. Let's just say that our fifth son is the cutest, especially when he smiles. His two tiger teeth are definitely an excellent weapon for capturing women. It seems that the little fool is going to choose our fifth son. Third brother, don't talk nonsense. It's up to me. If a little fool chooses, he will also choose you. No woman in the capital knows that you are gentle and affectionate, and you are the best at making women happy. Chu Xuanli disdainfully hid behind Chu Xuanma and pushed him forward. Chu Xuanma raised his eyes and coldly looked at Lin Yinshi's overdressed face. A hint of disgust and disdain flashed in his eyes, and he suddenly became angry. He used a fan to smash the fruit plate in Lin Yinshi's hand to the ground. With a crisp jingle, a plate of green plums scattered everywhere. Oh, Shears Qingli, you bad guy. The first to flirt is cheap. A big man, why do he have so many hands? Lin Yinshi furrowed his eyebrows and hid a chill in his eyes. He let out a scream and lifted his leg, stomping two feet on Chu Xian's feet. Chu Xuanma didn't expect Lin Yinshi to dare to fight against him. He gritted his teeth in pain, and just as he wanted to fight back, he looked up at the majestic eyes of the Chu Emperor. After all, he didn't dare to go too far and could only bear this loss. Lin Yinshi noticed Chu Xuanma's wrinkled expression and secretly hooked his lips. He pretended to be silly and half knelt on the ground, picking up the scattered green plums one by one. 
A green plum rolled down to a pair of white boots, and in front of him were a pair of slender and straight legs. Lin Yinshi looked up and met a stunning and unparalleled face. The man's face is white and pure, with three-dot-dimensional facial features, shining red phoenix eyes, thin lips lightly pursed, and a perfect and excellent jawline. Every part seems to be carefully crafted by a fairy. The only downside is that when looking at people, the expression is very cold, the body is too thin and thin, and the whole person exudes a glass-like sense of fragmentation. Lin Yinshi was stunned, his eyes closed in amazement, and he stood up and handed the greenly in his hand to the man, saying, Greenly, Sheer invites you to eat. Chapter 5 Counting the Benefits of Marrying Uncle Jiu Wang You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. The man had no expression on his face, his beautiful phoenix eyes staring straight at her. The air pressure emanating from him was extremely low, and even though she had dealt with many extremely vicious villains, she felt a bit chilly. Lin Yinshi, it's so dirty. Who wants to eat the things that fell on the ground? The atmosphere around him became eerily quiet for a moment, when Chu Xuanrui suddenly walked over and knocked out the green Li in Lin Yinshi's hand, then turned around and saluted the man. Uncle Jiu Huang. At the sight of Chu Xuanrui, several princes led by Crown Prince Chu Xuanli also saluted and respectfully shouted, Uncle Jiu Huang. The attitude of several princes towards the man in front of them is very strange, as if they are both respectful and afraid. After finishing the ceremony, they let Lu Fen retreat to both sides, and at this moment, the man slowly stepped forward to pay his respects to the emperor and empress. Chu Yenya has met his imperial brother and sister. In law, the man leaned down slightly, with an elegant posture, and his voice was like the gentle melody of the seven strings of a guzheng, deep and graceful, extremely pleasing to the ear. The Chu emperor frowned slightly as he looked at the man in front of him. At this moment, a eunuch ran over and whispered something in his ear. Emperor Chu's gaze became complicated as he pointed to the chair on one side and said, Since you're here, then sit down. The man sat down obediently, and the closest palace maids became visibly nervous. Lin Yunxi watched quietly, finally having a clear memory of the man in front of her. Banquet King Chu Yenya, the youngest son of Emperor Tai Shang and the younger brother of Emperor Chu, is revered by the world as the ninth emperor uncle. Zhou Huang uncle Chu Yenye was born into exile among the common people. At the age of 14, he was beaten to half his life and thrown out of the casino. He was discovered by palace spies and brought back to the palace. It is said that Chu Yenye suffered a lot in the folk and worked as a servant, a flower house servant, and a casino thug in several dental shops. He crawled out of the mass grave several times, but due to witnessing the darkness of the world, he had a rebellious personality and acted regardless of the occasion, relying solely on his will. It was rumored that those who offended him would not survive that night. When Chu Yenye was just brought back to the palace, a concubine of the Supreme Emperor, who somehow offended him, was crushed by his neck on the spot and died, which made him famous in a battle. Emperor Tai Shang felt guilty for the unfortunate exile of Chu Yenye among the people, so he made every effort to protect him, resulting in a situation where everyone feared and respected him, and even Emperor Chu wanted to give him a third share. It was also because Chu Yenye had suffered a lot during his exile in the mortal world, and his body had collapsed early. The imperial physician diagnosed his pulse, and Chu Yenye did not live to be 25 years old. There are still three months left until the 25th birthday of Chu Yenye. Lin Yinxi didn't recognize Chu Yenye at first glance because Chu Yenye rarely appeared in grand occasions, and she was a fool who never had contact with the circle that belonged to Chu Yenye. Lin Yinxi's thoughts returned, and the empress smiled and said, Yinxi, did you ever think of which prince to choose as your husband? It was also because of the Empress's words that they pulled everyone back from the tense atmosphere that had arisen from the appearance of Chu Yenye. Everyone looked at Lin Yinxi again. Lin Yinxi's eyes changed color, she tilted her head and pretended to be conflicted. Then, she reached out her hand, passed through the princes, and pointed straight into the corner. 
She lazily sat, quietly watching Uncle Jiu Huang, who was playing with the mandarin ducks in the lotus pond. Uncle Jiu Huang had just taken his seat, and he seemed to have wandered beyond the heavens, but even so, he was as beautiful as an impeccable painting. Looking at such a nine emperor uncle, everyone suddenly understood Lin Yinxi's choice. Everyone has a love for beauty. Although a little fool is foolish, he can still distinguish between ugliness and beauty. Otherwise, he wouldn't have chased after King Rui like that before. Now that he sees someone even more beautiful than King Rui, why don't he move on to another relationship? However, Uncle Jiu Huang is still lacking in seniority, so he shouldn't be available for Lin Yinxi to choose from. Lin Yinxi frowned, she didn't care if Uncle Jiu Huang could be chosen by her, let's talk about it. She is a fool and can understand even if she doesn't understand the rules. Besides, the Empress just asked her which prince has been chosen, and Uncle Jiu Huang is also a prince without any problems. Lin Yinxi pondered in her heart that she chose Uncle Jiu Huang not simply because he looked good, but because he had been carefully considered. Uncle Jiu Huang has a rebellious personality, and in her modern words, she is simply criticizing him crazily. Married to Uncle Jiu Huang, Chu Xuanrui dared not offend him, and his identity could still achieve a level one leap. He held down the scumbag couple of Chu Xuanrui in Lin Miao Miao, calling them Huang Anti, and thought about it to relieve his anger. She is still pregnant with a cub, and Uncle Jiu Huang only has three months of life. After Uncle Jiu Huang's death, she can smoothly become a widow and take care of her cub. If she hasn't died in three months, if possible, she can make a deal with Uncle Jiu Huang to cure him. From then on, the silver and goods will be settled, and she will take her cub and leave for a romantic relationship. No matter how much this deal is calculated, it's only a profit and not a loss. As for the personality traits that are difficult to deal with, there are gains and losses. Compared to what is gained, what is lost can be compensated for by finding ways to make up for it. Lin Yinxi's abacus was clattering, completely unnoticed, and everyone present looked at her like they were looking at a madman. There was a complete silence on the spot, and the first person to react was Chu Xuanrui. Chapter 6 The Child's Father is Hungry and Unscrupulous You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chu Xuanrui forcefully grabbed Lin Yinxi's wrist, his emotions rolling and complex in his eyes. Lin Yinxi, you have become more and more daring. If you want to offend the flower idiot, you can stop it. Can you also think of Uncle Jiu Huang? Why can't she just think Xiao? Lin Yinxi shook off Chu Xuanrui and asked foolishly, what does Xiao mean? Can't Xi Er choose Uncle Jiu Huang as her husband? Isn't Uncle Jiu Huang the prince of banquet? Isn't even Prince Xi Er able to choose him? Lin Yinxi clenched his fingers and pretended to be trying to sort out the relationship. With this innocent and foolish appearance, no one would doubt that Lin Yinxi is not a fool. Even everyone felt that this was too foolish. Besides lacking in seniority, what's more important about Uncle Jiu Huang is his personality that no one can control when he goes crazy. How could he be willing to marry a fool? Lin Yinxi is afraid he's really tired of living. The wandering Jiu Huang uncle seemed to hear the voices of everyone and finally slowly shifted his gaze. His gaze was cold and devoid of warmth. He looked at Lin Yinxi as if he were looking at a dead person. What a terrifying look, Lin Yinxi was secretly shocked and finally felt the terror of the rumors. But since I have made up my mind, I cannot be scared by the eyes of Uncle Jiu Huang. Lin Yinxi stabilized his mind and looked up, as if he couldn't detect the murderous aura in Uncle Jiu Huang's eyes. Instead, he naively grinned at him. Lin Yinxi saw the corner of Uncle Jiu Huang's eye twitch, and she thought to herself, probably Uncle Jiu Huang was scared by his appearance. Traveling through, before causing a big uproar in Shitang, she first saw her own appearance, and the original owner's makeup was really unbearable. Whether you are a future husband or not, if you don't want to be a long-term couple, at least you should also be a couple. The second impression is also very important. Lin Yinxi restrained his silly smile and waved at Uncle Jiu Huang. 
She saw that the corner of Uncle Jiu Huang's eye twitched twice this time, and then her eyes lit up. Uncle Jiu Huang had already arrived in front of her. Chu Yenye felt a sense of oppression all over his body, picking up Lin Yinxi's jaw. His voice was as if wrapped in a layer of cold ice, and he coldly smashed at her, Say it again, what do you want to choose me as your own king? Lin Yinxi instinctively wanted to escape Chu Yenye's gaze, which was too cold. When she was in the mercenary corps, she had never seen a fugitive so terrifying. But now the arrow is on the string, there is no room for retreat. Impressions of this kind of thing are elusive and should be abandoned without hesitation. Lin Yinxi pretended not to hear Chu Yenye's threat and naturally replied, Husband. After speaking, he even tiptoed hard and thrust his face towards Chu Yenye, pretending to be innocent and blinking his eyes. Uncle Jiu Huang, are you lifting Xie'er's face to see her more clearly? You are almost becoming Xie'er's husband. Xie'er will only show you, take a closer look. Don't look at Xie'er's dirty face now, it looks good after washing it clean. She didn't lie about this. The original owner was indeed very good dot looking, but she had always believed in Lin Miao's deception and thought that turning her face into a dye plate was the only way to look good. The stepmother of the original owner initially mentioned her a few times, but later felt that the original owner was not smart and it was safer to wear a face like a dye plate before getting married, so she let it go. From her current perspective, her stepmother is overthinking it. If it were really safe, she wouldn't have a child in her belly now. With his own appearance, even the child's father can handle it. It's so desperate to eat. Lin Yinxi pursed his lips in the center and saw everyone listening to her words, their expressions becoming strange. They wanted to laugh but were afraid that Chu Yenya wouldn't dare to, and it was very difficult to hold back. In fact, in everyone's eyes, Lin Yinxi's foolishness and ugliness are well dot known in the imperial capital. Her face can be so ugly even if she has been dressed up before. If she doesn't dress up, her face will be covered in pockmarks and she won't be able to look at it. He shamelessly claimed to be good dot looking in front of Uncle Jiu Huang, which really angered him. Uncle Jiu Huang may have crushed Lin Yinxi's neck just like he did when he crushed Empress Yu's neck. When everyone thought about it, they no longer found it funny, leaving only fear and trembling. Emperor Chu seemed to think the same way. He stood up and ordered nervously, Xiao Jiu, let go. Brother, are you so anxious? Are you afraid that my younger brother will kill her? Chu Yenye casually raised his eyebrows and glanced at Chu Emperor, then turned his head and slid his finger down onto Lin Yinxi's neck, gently sliding and smiling as if admiring the finest jade. This little girl has a really beautiful neck, slender and beautiful. I don't know what it feels like to crush it, how would it feel? This is indeed a crazy criticism, as Lin Yinxi personally experienced, and his senses were more direct. But she is someone who is more serious and rational. Since she has chosen, it is impossible for her to back down. Lin Yinxi's eyes moved, and under the tense gaze of everyone, he boldly grasped Chu Yenya's wrist. The pulse is floating, and several toxins are intertwined and mixed in the body. There is also an unknown gas rushing through the meridians. This body is indeed as rumored, damaged and unable to survive for three months. Lin Yinxi took the opportunity to pulse Chu Yenya, but this was only a matter completed in a blink of an eye and could never be seen by anyone on the surface. After finishing her pulse, she slowly moved up Chu Yenya's wrist and landed on the back of his hand. She pulled his hand away from her neck and naturally interlocked it with her ten fingers. She admired with satisfaction and looked at Chu Yenya with sincere eyes, excitedly saying, Prince, your fingers are really beautiful, slender and beautiful. Holding hands feels very comfortable, they really match Shear's hands. Chapter 7 only marrying a corpse. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Lin Yinxi's actions were too unconventional. When Chu Yenya looked at Lin Yinxi, he was clearly stunned for a moment. In the next moment, he seemed disgusted and quickly shook Lin Yinxi's hand away, taking a few steps away in disgust. 
After all, Chu Yenye did not kill Lin Yunxi. Everyone breathed a sigh of relief and glanced at Lin Yunxi more. Indeed, fools are blessed with foolishness. In front of everyone's eyes, they have mocked Uncle Jiu Huang, yet they still have a chance to live. Lin Yunxi didn't expect it to go so smoothly, but she didn't lie either. Chu Yenye's fingers were really beautiful, with well-proportioned joints and slender like bamboo. Chu Yenye, whether in appearance or hands, grew according to her preferences, but unfortunately, his life is not long. Chu Yenye was not a worm in Lin Yunxi's stomach, unable to hear her regret. He just stared at his hand that had been touched by Lin Yunxi, his face dark and terrifying, making people wonder if he would go crazy and chop off his own hand. The atmosphere has once again become solemn. The Chu Emperor didn't know what he was thinking, and his expression changed. After careful consideration, he looked at Chu Yinye. Xiao Jiu, you have no joking words. Since Yinxi has chosen you, this matter is settled. I will ask the Imperial Censorate to choose an auspicious day as soon as possible. Prepare and marry Yinxi. I only know how to marry a corpse through the door. Chu Yenye didn't even look at the Chu Emperor this time, his face still gloomy as he stared at his own hand. It is indeed crazy enough to be so arrogant even in front of the ruler of a country. The Chu Emperor's face turned pale, and even so, he did not get angry. He just said, tell your father that if you really don't want to marry, why are you here again? There is an insider behind Chu Emperor's words. It turns out that Chu Yenye came here to run for election on the orders of the Supreme Emperor. Lin Yunxi pursed her lips and said, how could such a coincidence happen? In fact, it's easy to guess what the Emperor was thinking. Most likely, it was because Chu Yenye only had three months to live and wanted him to marry and stay behind. After all, besides having personality problems, Chu Yenye has always been uninterested in women because he has stayed in the Hualu Ziyawagwan. He had previously arranged two marriages, but now he is almost 25 years old and doesn't have a woman by his side. When the Chu Emperor mentioned the Supreme Emperor, Chu Yenye's expression finally changed, no longer filled with solemnity, but he still did not agree. I will definitely not marry her. If my brother wants to, then he can marry her himself. After speaking, Chu Yenye left with both hands behind him, ignoring anyone and imposing. Bastard thing. At this moment, Emperor Chu's anger couldn't help but burst out, brushing all the things on the table in front of him to the ground. Emperor, calm down. Everyone knelt down together, and Lin Yinxi was startled and pretended to be foolish as well. Emperor Chu is truly the ruler of a country, with excellent emotional management. After getting angry, he quickly regained his composure. He spoke solemnly, let's all get up. Yunxi, that's all for today. You can go back to your mansion and rest assured to get married. The words of Emperor Chu sounded somewhat lenient. He did not intend to kill her by marrying Chu Yenye, but by asking her to stay married, it indicated that regardless of whether Chu Yenye was willing to marry her in the future, she could not escape the fate of getting married. The Emperor of Chu achieved this level for the sake of 200,000 soldiers and fame. As for what? Lin Yinxi pondered and finally exhaled a mouthful of turbid air. Anyway, I hope that the Supreme Emperor can suppress Chu Yenye and everything can proceed smoothly according to her plan. After Emperor Chu finished speaking to Lin Yinxi, he could no longer stay here and left with the Empress. As soon as the Emperor and Empress left, several princes exchanged a glance and also left one after another. Before leaving, Chu Xianchen looked at her disdainfully snorting coldly. Chu Xuanli gave her a slight smile. Chu Xuanma walked up to her, as if he had discovered an interesting object. He stared at her for a while before stroking his broken hair in front of his forehead and leaving, realizing his charm. Chu Xuanli showed her big white teeth as if silly and sweet, and said, Little fool, you are so brave. You dare to propose to marry Uncle Jiu Huang. I wish you good luck and become an imperial aunt as soon as possible. Lin Yunxi wanted to laugh, 
worthy of being someone who even makes people laugh when they stare. She pretended to be foolish and said, Thank you, you're so kind. No need, I have always been a good person. Chu Xuanli's smile became even brighter and she walked away satisfied. Chu Xuanrui was at the end of the line, his eyes sinister as he approached Lin Yinxi. Without saying a word, he fiercely pulled Lin Yinxi to one side. Stupid person who knows nothing about life and death, are you really praising yourself as the fifth prince? If you offend Uncle Jiu Huang, I don't know if you can live through tonight. Those who are sensible should go to my father's court now and tell him that you made the wrong choice and don't marry Uncle Jiu Huang. Chapter 8 A good nephew, his name is Huang Anti. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Lin Yinxi rolled his eyes and looked at Chu Xuanrui with an angry expression in front of him. This scumbag, if he really cares about her life and death, why did he buy and kill her and defile her in the first place? Even though he first demoted his wife to a concubine, he reacted so excitedly and pretended to be a saint. Why don't you speak? Finally you know you're afraid. Just be afraid. Don't rely on your own brain to act recklessly. I'll take you to find the father emperor now. Chu Xuanrui saw Lin Yinxi looking at him silently, thinking that she finally knew she was wrong. He let out a sigh and rudely grabbed her wrist before leaving. There's a brain problem, it's not because of you. What are you saying? Just then, Lin Yinxi's voice rang out again, and Chu Xuanrui instinctively stopped. Lin Yinxi has a brain problem. Isn't it because she fell into the water on her own and got overheated and burned? What does it have to do with him? That day he also fell into the water, but it was Lin Miao Miao who saved him. Xi'er didn't say anything. Lin Yinxi looked at Chu Xuanrui with questioning eyes, then pretended to be lost. He lowered his gaze as Chu Xuanrui grabbed her wrist and continued to pretend to be foolish. Rui Wang, I have given you the divorce certificate. You can't hold on to Xi'er anymore. Xi'er is going to marry the banquet king, and you should also call her, Xi'er Emperor Anti, in the future. Xiu Xu and Huang Anti were both pain points that could stimulate Chu Xuanrui. Chu Xuanrui no longer cared about Lin Yinxi's bad brain, and his face was instantly shrouded in a layer of dark clouds. He gritted his teeth and asked, You, say, what? My dear nephew. I've grown up and can't hold on to Aunt Huang anymore. Lin Yinxi was too lazy to answer Chu Xuanrui, so he shook off his hand and lifted his knee to forcefully collide with Chu Xuanrui somewhere. Mmm. Chu Xuanrui immediately let out a muffled groan in pain, bent down, and almost couldn't help but cover something with his hands. Lin, Yun, Shi. Chu Xuanrui's gaze was about to kill, and his assassins came to catch Lin Yinxi again. How could Lin Yinxi let him catch him, slip away like a fish, and shout foolishly in his mouth? Rui Wang, please don't beat Xi'er. The divorce certificate has already been given to you, and there is no more. The palace maids and eunuchs had not yet left. When Chu Xuanrui pulled Lin Yinxi to speak, they all paid attention to the commotion here. Upon hearing this, they all looked over curiously. When Lin Yunxi mentioned the letter of divorce, everyone couldn't help but want to laugh. The Tang Tang Rui Wang was dismissed by a fool, and the notice of dismissal still wiped his nose. I really want to laugh at it every time. Chu Xuanrui was extremely displeased as he watched Lin Yunxi running across from him with a face full of fear, as well as the palace maids and eunuchs nearby. Lin Yunxi, since you are stubborn and insist on seeking death, then do as you please. I have already reminded you for the sake of Miao Miao's face, which can be considered as benevolent and righteous. This fool is talking nonsense again, only knowing how to meddle and pester without understanding a word. It would be even better if he were strangled to death by Uncle Jiu Huang. What does he care about so much? Chu Xuanrui angrily shook his sleeves and left, but his walking posture was a bit strange. Chu Xuanrui left, and Lin Yinxi, led by the palace maid, walked outside the palace. I heard many people whispering along the way. 
You say, will Uncle Jiu Huang really marry a little fool in the end? Marrying or not is meaningless. Uncle Jiu Huang only has three months to live, and marrying him is also a matter of staying a widow. That's right, but to be honest, it sounds like a perfect match between a fool and a madman. Pai Pai is Pai Pai, but you all forget that those who offend Uncle Jiu Huang will not survive that night. Uncle Jiu Huang didn't kill the little fool just now, and maybe he will turn around and take action. That little fool, isn't it miserable? With these discussions, the news also spread back to the Lin Guogong mansion. Chapter 9 Tie her up and give her to Uncle Jiu Huang. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. The atmosphere in the hall of Duke Lin's mansion was oppressive. Lin Qingshan and Lin Guogong's wife, Li Shi, sat on the upper seat in the center of the lower hall, where a middle dot aged couple was crying. Father, you have to make the decision for Miao Miao. Miao Miao is your carefully cultivated granddaughter. Today, she was publicly punctured and pregnant by Yun Shi in the Shitang. She is currently living in the Duanwang mansion without any name or share. How will she live in the future? Yes, father. Yun Shi used to be a bit foolish, and as an uncle, I also have a deep affection for her. I didn't expect her to cause such a big trouble today. Not only did she ruin her wonderful marriage, but she also took the initiative to provoke the banquet king. The banquet king is angry, how can our Lin State Mansion bear it? She is not enough to die herself, and she will also bring us to the entire Lin State Mansion for burial. After the woman finished crying, the man continued to complain. This couple is none other than Lin Guogong's second wife, Lin Miao Miao's biological parents, and Lin Yunxi's second uncle and sister. In law. At first, Lin Qingshan's face was gloomy. As Lin Eri said that Lin Yunxi wanted to accompany the entire Lin Guogong mansion for burial, he immediately became furious and slammed the table heavily. Everyone knows that Lin Qingshan values the interests of the government the most. The title of the Guogong mansion has been inherited for three generations, and by the time Lin Qingshan was born, it had already declined. Lin Qingshan had a heart to revitalize the Guogong mansion, but his ability was limited. Fortunately, he had a son who was full of vitality. Lin Yuyen, also known as Lin Yinxi's father, joined the army at the age of 14 and fought for military achievements at the age of 16. He climbed and rolled all the way to become a renowned general, and it was only then that Lin Guogong mansion was once again seen by the upper-class nobility. Now that Lin Yuyen died in battle and soon returned to the bottom, Lin Qingshan was very anxious. This time Lin Miao Miao remarried and planned to demote his wife to a concubine with King Rui, but he actually tacitly agreed. It is better to let a foolish granddaughter occupy the position of the Duan princess than to let a clever granddaughter marry in, which can better seek benefits for the government. After the matter was exposed, Lin Miao Miao still entered the Duanwang mansion. Although she has not been given a title yet, she is still pregnant and the Chu Emperor will always give an explanation. He is such a foolish granddaughter. Fools have their own blessings. The Emperor of Chu asked her to choose another prince as her husband, so the Lin State Mansion would have a double husband. The two princes are so glorious, but unfortunately, Lin Yunxi, this fool, messed up everything. So many excellent princes were not chosen, but only one madman was chosen. This villain. Lin Qingshan became increasingly angry as he thought about it. He immediately stood up and ordered, someone, hurry to guard the mansion gate. When the villain returns, he will be immediately tied up and sent to the banquet king to prevent harm to the whole family. Upon hearing this, Mr. and Mrs. Lin exchanged a glance, their eyes flickering with success. Lin Yunxi had just been brought back to the imperial palace by the Chu Emperor to choose a son. In law. Shortly after, Lin Miao Miao sent someone back to complain about her grievances, and the second wife immediately became angry. How could a fool make their precious daughter suffer such great injustice and make her feel better? Just as Lin Qing Shan gave the order, the servant who was ordered to leave immediately returned and reported, Lord Guo, 
the young lady has already returned to the mansion 15 minutes ago and is currently heading towards the autumn frost courtyard of the old lady. It's useless. If you go back to the autumn frost courtyard, you won't know how to tie someone up. Hurry up and get out of here. Wait a minute. I'll go with you. This matter is related to the survival of the government, and Lin Ching Shan thought it was more appropriate to go in person. Over here. After Lin Yinshi entered the Duke's mansion, he walked towards the autumn frost courtyard according to his memory. Along the way, the servants in the mansion were just like the people outside, pointing and mocking her. She seemed to have never heard of them all, it's okay. Thirty years in the east and thirty years in the west, it won't be long before these people will know who the real fool is. Quickly, Autumn Frost Courtyard appeared before her eyes, and these three words were written in beautiful hairpin font by her stepmother Xiao Shi. Xiao is a typical jade from a small family. She has a soft personality, but is quite talented. More importantly, she has a kind heart and treats her like her own. In theory, if there was such a big commotion today, even if Xiao couldn't wait at the entrance of the mansion in person, she would still send someone to wait. How could there be no commotion at all? It seems that as she was worried before, there might really be an accident. Lin Yinxi's eyes turned cold, and this person had already entered the yard. The yard was quiet, with cries and curses coming from inside. Chapter 10 Miss Restores Intelligence You are listening at NovelFull.audio Crying and crying, what's there to cry about? Madame Eyre has already instructed you to stay in the yard with Sixth Young Master due to the complexity of things today. Sixth Young Master is young and immature, and you are also young and immature. Now that you have been bitten by a snake while climbing a wall, what's the use of crying? Crying is useless, then you can let us go find the doctor, or you can go find the doctor. Damn you, how dare you talk back. Even if you look for a doctor, it's useless. Being bitten by a venomous snake is incurable. If you want to blame it, blame the eldest lady. She cried and cried all day long, causing the eldest master to cry, and now even the sixth young master to cry. It's also unlucky for our duke's mansion to marry the eldest lady. She was born into a small family, and the eldest lady didn't know what evil he had in the past. The sound of cursing inside continued, and Lin Yinshi had already guessed the beginning and end of the matter. It must be the second wife, afraid of exposing the matter of demoting her wife to a concubine, so let someone take care of Xiao Shi and his younger brother. She caused a big fuss in Shitang, and an incident broke out in the east window. When Xiao and his younger brother became anxious and wanted to go out to find her, his younger brother came up with the idea of climbing over the wall, but was bitten by a venomous snake. This is the main room of the big house, and servants clean it every day. Even if her father passes away, there has been much neglect in the past month, and it is impossible for poisonous snakes to appear. This is too strange. And there's also this cursed grandmother, her words are really unpleasant. Those who know are servants cursing their masters, while those who don't know think it's some kind of wicked mother. In. Law who's teaching her daughter. In. Law a lesson. Xiao is good at everything, but she has a soft personality. When her father is around, she is okay. These servants don't like Xiao and can only say a few words behind her back. When her father is not around, pointing at her nose and cursing becomes the norm. Some servants even openly come to the house to pick up things, and it's useless if things get too big. The head of the household is the second wife Su, who doesn't know how to control them and even rewards them. She could hear the cursed grandmother's voice, and it was Shin Mama, the capable grandmother beside Su Shi. Lin Yinxi's eyes were tinged with killing intent, and he walked in quickly. As soon as she entered the door, she saw Xiao Shi half kneeling on the ground, holding her younger brother Lin Chaosheng in her arms. The six-year dot old child's face turned blue, his lips turned purple, his eyes were half closed due to weakness, and one leg of his pants rolled up to his calf, with a clear tooth mark on it. A plump and plump grandmother was cross-legged and cursing, while the maid Shui Huan of the Xiao family desperately wanted to charge out, 
but was firmly grabbed by another maid beside the Su family, Tan Yu. Sister. Lin Chaoxing saw Lin Yunxi and a glimmer of light flashed in his half-closed eyes, weakly extending his hand towards her. Sheer. Xiao Shi saw Lin Yunxi come back, and a hint of joy flashed on her face, followed by even more tears. Shen Mama's face first flashed a hint of guilt, and then remembered that the person in front of her was just a fool, not enough to be afraid, and she became suspicious again. Oh, our banquet queen has returned, ha ha. Even if a fool matches a madman, I don't know if we can survive. Before Shen Mama could finish speaking, Lin Yunxi was already behind her. She grabbed Shen Mama's hair and desperately smashed her head to the ground, cutting off what Shen Mama wanted to say. One, two, three. Shen Mama quickly lost her breath. Lin Yunxi's eyes were cold and without warmth, looking at Tan Yu. Tan Yu had long been scared out of her soul by the sudden change. When Lin Yunxi looked at her, she felt as if she was being stared at by a demon, trembling all over and running out recklessly. Ah! I killed someone, a fool killed someone, the young lady went crazy.